And we really want to encourage women today to throw off that yoke and be bold enough to step out. And yeah, there may be some people that won't like it, but to be honest, the only way that you're going to have everybody like what you're doing is if you do nothing. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Hi, everybody. We are so glad that you are with us because today we are talking out all about what it's like to be a woman, (laughs) and especially what it's like to be a woman in the Christian world and how God sees us and so many great things. So um, we... We have a lot of specific examples, I think, of different ways that we've all had to deal with that in our own lives. And how about a woman in the change of life? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That yeah. might help some people. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're not afraid to talk about anything. We no, are we true. are not going to shy away Tell from it. Tell them like it, it is. So, yeah. <laughs> Let us know what Guys, you if you snuck in here and you're going to listen, we're just warning you right now. You, <laughs> Prepare. You're welcome. Prepare yourself. You're welcome. You, you might need all this all information. <laughs> <laughs> It'll help them, too. Oh, anyway. So let's let's begin by just talking about some of those challenges, because there are so many great things about being a woman, and we want to talk about that mm-hmm. too. I think that's hugely important. But what are some of the challenges that you guys think of um, or have faced about just living life as a lady? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I first started teaching... Um, it was tough mm-hmm. because there were not very many women doing this, and people just, you know, because of a couple of things Paul said in the Bible, they just took it that women couldn't teach. And Paul did say, I don't allow a woman to teach. But part of that was their culture. Mm-hmm. Part of it was the fact that women weren't educated. And I've been told, I don't read Greek, but I've been told that the Greek word that they use there for men is the same Greek word that's translated husband hmm. other places. And so if you took that literally, I don't allow women to teach. They couldn't teach Sunday school. Mm-hmm. They couldn't teach school. <laughs> I mean, right. if, you, if you're going to... Right. Yeah. It tends know, to cover all of it. Take it just like it is. Plus, you have to interpret the, t- the Bible. I say it like this. You have to interpret the Bible by the Bible. So... Paul, obviously, he had women that ran house churches. Mm -hmm. He had women traveled with Jesus, ministered to him. Mm -hmm. Women were the last at the cross, the first at the tomb. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I always say a woman was the first one to preach the gospel because Jesus told Mary, go and tell my disciples he is risen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the Old Testament, you got Deborah, you got Esther, you got Ruth, you got... Oh, you got women prophetesses, you got... And really, Jesus settled the whole issue whenever he said there's no more male nor female, junior Greek. But people, women over the years, looking back, I mean, they couldn't vote, they couldn't own property, they couldn't be educated. There was just It's women. been a long road, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been a long, long road. And so when the devil fights that hard to keep somebody down... <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's an awfully good reason because women are very talented, not Mm -hmm. necessarily any more talented than men, but our talents are different. Women are very compassionate. Mm -hmm. They're sensitive. They they have a lot of unique gifts. And we just want to see women step out and be more courageous and not let just that general idea that's out there choke the yeah. gifts out of them. Mm-hmm. I have to say, before we even go too far, just a thank you to you yeah. because of what you have done and how you've paved the way. Someone like me, I haven't had to work as hard to be able to sit here and talk about Jesus or right. some other in so many ways 
because you were bold enough to be who God called you to be, that makes a huge difference for all of us. And right. so a huge thank you to right. to you. Yeah. From many, many women. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I know yeah. I, gl- I gleaned from from people like you. Like you were one of the forefront people that I, I like thought of, especially when I started doing more music stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the area that I was... I, didn't, I wasn't even allowed to listen to hip hop at all growing up. Like that was like, like the church really didn't allow it. But that was like the area, like Christian hip hop ended up being the area that I really did music <laughs> in. And I was like, how did that even happen? But I was one of the first women on that side of things with all of the, the Christian hip hop guys like Lecrae and Triple E, all those guys. And I was one of the first women to write mm-hmm. in that. And, um, th- and I got a lot of pushback. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of pushback in, in that genre because... Um, with the guys, with churches, with everyone. Like, I wasn't allowed to tour with them. Uh, even wow. though I wrote a lot of the songs, I wasn't allowed. Yeah. Like, even when it came down to the, um, like, splits and, you know, like, the, the the business side of things like that. Like, when you write a song, you get writer shares. Mm-hmm. And at, and me speaking up for myself saying that I deserve 50% of this song because I wrote half of it, it was just it was shunned, you know, yeah. and wow. I was just silenced a lot. And so just to see now, like how you, that that genre has come so far. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I thought of you a lot. Like I remember when Joyce couldn't do things, you know, I got to keep going. I got to mm-hmm. get. So it, it's, it's a cool full circle moment for me to even be able to do ministry, like even with you. Because I would you be were invited one of those people. like to come and do a women's meeting on a Saturday. But then the pastor would not have me <laughs> in the pulpit on Sunday. Yeah. So it was okay uh, on Saturday. It was okay on Saturday. Yeah. But not on Sunday. But not on Sunday. And for a women's meeting. And, yeah, mm. for, a, for a woman to speak. And there were times when I would go to a church on a Sunday, and sometimes men would get up and walk out. Not all of them, but, you know, oh. two or three. And that, it, it, was a, oh. it was a little bit hard. Yeah, but, it would be. You know, if you ask me now, I don't, I don't really have any problems now. Yeah. And if there are people that have an attitude— I just I don't care, and I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a smart <laughs> yeah, aleck way. No, sure. But I've been doing this forty five years, and anybody who would want to say it's not God would have to be crazy because you yeah, it's clear you could it not. Is. God provides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For this. Yes. And you could not come up with no. the kind of finances you need to run a a worldwide ministry unless God was yeah, behind absolutely. it. Yeah. And well, so, it wasn't always easy, and you've talked no. about some of those challenges. So we're, we're going to take a look at a quick clip from Joyce talking about some of those challenges, especially back when she was beginning and, and how she really did have to press through. I tell this frequently, but I think it's worth saying again today. When I received the fullness of the Holy Spirit back in the 70s and God called me to preach, being a woman preacher was not a very popular, acceptable thing. I didn't know that though. I just was trying to follow God. (laughs) And I just, I mean, I literally was just, I wasn't living out of my head. I just felt like God called me to do this. So I was just real excited and hey, I do. Well, I got asked to leave my church. We lost most of our friends, maybe maintained a couple. A lot of our family members, we were like taboo, you know, at the family gatherings for a long, long time because they didn't understand me. I mean, I was doing something out of the box. I had stepped out of the comfortable little sameness of what everybody does. And I had to pay a price and I had to pay it early and I've had to pay it many, many times since then. It's not fun to be in a position like I am and see somebody put an article in the newspaper about you that you know is not true and have God tell you don't even bother trying to defend yourself. I mean, when things have been said about us, sometimes people have said, well, why don't you just get on television and tell them the truth? You speak to the whole world and God won't let us do that. I mean, I, you know, I might explain something sometime if it was something I felt like people needed to know, but there is a price to pay. Oh, but the benefits. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Jesus. I remember when I used to lay down at night and be so miserable, I wished it was time to get up. And when I got up, I was so miserable, I wished it was time to go to bed. (laughs) Has anybody ever been there? Well, hallelujah, now I'm happy. I'm peaceful. I'm joyful. I love my life. I know I'm born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, on my way to heaven. 
and I'm doing something with my life that is fruitful. And I had to invest my friends at that time, and I was lonely for a long time, but I got plenty of friends now. Joshua said, there's all kinds of gods that you can serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So Joyce, you had to keep on day after day, weekend after weekend, doing what you were doing in spite of the people who were saying no, that you shouldn't, mm -hmm. in spite of the friends that you lost, mm -hmm. um, the challenges, the roadblocks that were in front of you. How did you see God begin to, you know, crumble some of those walls? Well, you know, persistence pays off. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a good statement. And the devil... He's always trying to get you to quit. Mm -hmm. And he'll use fear as one of his favorite weapons. Uh, the fear of losing people out of your life, the fear, of the, yeah. even just the fear of being talked about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Fear of people gossiping about you. And, uh, you know, we're talking about being called by God to do something, but there's all kinds of people watching that maybe they want to own a business or, you know, it's like for me, it, when God calls you to do something, you're either going to do it or be miserable, mm -hmm. one of the two. So in, in some ways, you don't you have a choice, but you don't really have a choice if you love God and you want to be obedient to Him. But, you know, we hear stories all the time about women in the workplace that are uh, sexually abused or women in the workplace that aren't paid what a man's paid for doing the same job. Now, I think that's getting a lot better. Mm -hmm. But like you said, just like women had to fight for the right to vote, they've really fought an uphill, an uphill battle. But we see horrible things in other countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... It's still incredibly difficult. We've had a major breakthrough here, but we go to countries where girls are killed just because they're girls. Yeah. And they don't... They yeah. don't want them mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. What, yeah. A, what about, you know, like, let's, let's just say you, Aaron, like, you know, you have an important job here, but you're not preaching, so you, don't, right. you haven't experienced what I have, but what, what have you experienced? Yeah, it's interesting because I, I do, I mean, we work in such a wonderful environment, so we work with men who are great, mm -hmm. men who are sitting here with us. Um, they're wonderful, but even still, I have experienced walking into a meeting where I am one of the only females and it's uh, some of it I have to decipher whether it's actually happening or it's in my head. <laughs> right. But I, there is a sense of I am the smallest one in the room. Mm -hmm. And I can even feel myself sometimes want to cower. Mm -hmm. And I can know exactly what I need to say. I know I'm walking in with the information that they need or whatever, but I can feel myself cower back because I am the female. And there's something in my mind that says you, you are not as smart as they are. Mm -hmm. And whether they are saying that or not, that there's something that, our culture, I think, has told us. So I have had to work through like what you're saying. I know that I'm doing what God has called me to do. Like I know the answer because I know what I'm doing. Say it. Speak up. Mm -hmm. But there is something inside of us as women. I think you have to you have to rise up. Part of that is just the thing that the enemy has put yep. on women. And I and we really want to encourage women today to throw off that yoke yeah. and be bold enough mm -hmm. to step out. And yeah, there may be some people that won't like it, but to be honest, the only way that you're going to have everybody like what you're doing is if you do nothing. Right. <laughs> and I've had, I've thought about it too. I think that, um, I've talked to my husband about this. Like, do, do you men have these thought, thoughts? Do you even think about any of this stuff when you're in a meeting or whatever? And he's like, no, I, we just, I just do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. And I think that like you're saying, the enemy knows how to attack us. And so I don't want to feel rejected as a female. I don't want to feel less than, or just certain things, maybe it's me, but he knows where I'm weakest. And so that's how he attacks me. And it feels like it's so different for women than men and how he... I think women do, and just it's a general statement, but I think women probably care more about what people think than men do. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, Ginger, you've been in all kinds of leadership positions. What have you experienced? 
I find it very interesting that I didn't know I was a woman for a long time. Yeah. And that, <laughs> I'll talk about that. Explain that, please. Unpack that a little more for us. Yeah, maybe I should say that differently. Yeah. <laughs> I've always known I was a female. <laughs> no, I, I think... You my, didn't know there was a problem with it. Ex- exactly. Yeah. My parents, I think, really instilled in me from the time I was so tiny that I could do anything right. with God's help. And so... I didn't know that there would be those barriers. And right. I've certainly seen some of those things. Um, working in production, it is not, especially you know, 30, 40 years ago, not exactly a, a great breeding ground for women coming right. through that. You know, it is primarily men. And I, but I just didn't realize that I was supposed to have <laughs> some of those thoughts that you're right. talking about. And, and so... I didn't really do that. Good for you. Well, you know, sometimes not so good for me because at the same time you have to read the room Mm -hmm. and you have to, um, Hmm. you have to do what God asks you to do with wisdom Mm -hmm. and not just be too brash or, you know, Mm -hmm. because some of the things that you're talking about, like, like you said, are what the enemy's putting in our minds. Right. And some things are really happening. Sure. I mean, let's be Absolutely. honest. Sometimes the the opinion is just different of, of mm-hmm. a woman saying certain things. The expectations on us right. are often different. So I think about like, like women who decide that God's leading them to stay home with their kids. Mm-hmm. Right. And some of the expectations and the way people handle that sometimes is that, you know, they, they say that they're not doing something that's valuable enough, and it's mm-hmm. just so ludicrous. Oh, I just can't stand it when people say, well, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Oh, yeah. Let me or tell you job. something. So a important. A stay-at-home job. mom is a courageous woman. And, and, yes, <laughs> yeah. And a woman in business a, and a yeah. leader in business. It, it You know, it, it takes some tenacity, mm-hmm. and it, it takes a lot of prayer because <laughs> I have, you know, certainly not always done it really well, and mm-hmm. times God has helped me to, to do it well. And so, you know, I'm, I'm blessed by what I've been able to be a part of here and other places. Something that we can do too, if, and a lot of people don't know how to do this, but is to pray for favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm just sitting here thinking about all the different countries that I've been to and preached to these massive crowds. And I remember one meeting in particular in Africa and even Christian men over there, it's acceptable to beat your wife. And I, re- I remember, sometimes I wonder about myself. It's like, you know, you really got some guts. All over Africa. Africa and many other nations. All over the Middle East. Even in parts of India. India. Men beat their wives. And I just want to lovingly say to you that is like the worst thing that a man could ever do. I watched my father beat my mother. And it didn't make me think he was a big man. It made me disrespect him. I thought he was a coward. It made him little in my eyes, not big in my eyes. And I sit and I think about how did I get by with that? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, but God, if you're doing what God wants you mm-hmm, to do, mm-hmm. I mean, he can shut other people's mouths and make them listen. Yeah. And that you, you were at that meeting, and that was just an awesome meeting. And wasn't it raining, too? Was that the one where it was raining? And I said, you know, I'll stay here and preach if you'll listen. Wow. And People so didn't move. I encourage women to pray for favor. Yeah. Pray that God will give you favor and don't don't imagine a bunch of stuff that is not there. I don't I don't know if there's any men in our meetings that don't like me. I'm assuming if they're there they do. And we have more and more men coming to our conferences all the time. Oh yeah. And I think that that stigma is beginning to go away here more so than in other countries. I found you because of my dad. It wasn't even my mom. I mean, she she likes you too, but um, (laughs) (laughs) it was my dad. And I asked him, like, what is it about Joyce? Because he doesn't listen to other female speakers or pastors. Um, But it's it's your the way you communicate, and I think that just goes to show, like, God created you a female in a way that can still 
speak to a male because that's his call in your life. He doesn't care about anything else. That's yeah. who he made you to be. I, I think, I think so that's right. such a huge key because if God puts something in you to share, uh-huh. it doesn't matter no. if you're a man or a woman. Mm-mm. And that's why, you know, when I hear about girl boss or whatever, and not that there's anything wrong with that in particular, but I think, no, be the best Just boss. Be boss. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, be a great leader is, yeah. is really what it's about. And of course, there are challenges and we need to encourage each other. But if God is putting something in you to share, He will make a way for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So don't cower down. And yeah. you might have to knock open a few doors. Right. It doesn't mean that nothing will go without any problem, mm-hmm. but... He'll make a way. Well, God always has forerunners. Mm-hmm. He always has, you know, Jesus, the firstborn among mm-hmm. many brethren. And there's always somebody that has to go first and knock the doors down. Yeah. And I'm not the only one who did, but I'm one of the ones who did. Mm-hmm. And now there's just all kinds of wonderful, amazing, gifted, talented women yeah. that are coming up sharing the word and uh for whatever part i did get to play in paving the way for them i'm thankful that i did that because i've got the kind of personality and the boldness that will i will do what i believe god's telling me to do no matter who likes it Mm -hmm. i was just watching a clip of you from when you spoke you'll have to remember let me remember where it is where you climbed the wall because (laughs) cambodia cambodia so I, they, the clip has you getting out of the van, and you're walking up, and so they hoist you over right. this wall, and there's this massive crowds of people, and they're cheering. And I, what, what happened was they had closed the venue so that she couldn't preach. That they they shut the, the power were off. In. Yeah, exactly. But they turned the power off so I couldn't get in because it was a power gate. Yeah, and mm. that was not going to stop you. Yeah. So yeah. you climb the wall. Wow. And you, they hoisted I, me up on a trash can. Then on top of the wall, and then somebody caught me on the other side, and we didn't have any power, so I preached to a bullhorn. Gosh, wow. that's so great. I, I <laughs> sobbed watching it because what that says is I don't care what they d- say to me or what they try to do to hold me back. I will go and do what God has called me to do, and these people need to hear his message. And they of actually me. told me that that emboldened and encouraged the mm. people there more than if everything would have went right. I'll bet. Yeah. Because they saw that nothing was going to stop. That you yeah. don't have to let things yeah. stop yeah. you, that mm-hmm. you can press through yeah. and do what God's telling you to do. And what a great Absolutely. encouragement for women in general. Absolutely. Right. Is there there may be something that doesn't go as it seems, but God can use it in a greater way. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you continue to do what he asks you to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. And you know, women in leadership, and I think this is important to say. You know, I'm married 56 years to my husband, and uh, when I'm functioning in my gift on the platform, Dave never tells me what to do or what not to do, but when I come down off that platform, I'm not Joyce Meyer, the teacher, the preacher. I'm Dave Meyer's wife, and so I don't... Some women in leadership get an attitude. It's like they have a chip on their shoulder, and they're going to now try to tell everybody what to do. (laughs) And you do have to know what your place is in different roles. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I go to somebody else's church to minister, it's their church. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go in there and just do what I want to. I was at a church this past weekend, and the first thing I said to the pastor was, is there anything you want me to do or don't want me to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm. I think it's important for women to not get a attitude, yeah, you know, yeah. like I'm going to do whatever I want to. You know, yeah. there are places where you need to submit, you need to submit to authority. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're married and you're going to do something like this, you definitely need to honor your husband and you need to, I mean, God told me, he said, you are not Dave's teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're his wife. I love clarifying this this whole thing because it's really important and it's difficult for women to think about submitting, mm-hmm. but it's really not hard. It's still hard. Wait a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't what lie. I was going to say, it 
not as hard. hard. It's really not as hard when we see it the way God wants us to see it. It's really about order. Exactly. It's not about you're better than me, so you're going to boss me around. It's like... You're talking about submitting to our husbands because God says there has to be an order of authority in the home and submitting to authority wherever we are because, you know, that's the way things are structured. Otherwise, there's chaos. Mm -hmm. And, And I think that... That gives us a freedom, because then it also says to love each other as Christ loved mm-hmm. the church. So there's balance in all of it. But Aaron, you asked a question that I thought was such a good question. You said, how do we submit to men and still be leaders? Yeah, how do we do that? Well, I thought that was such an interesting question, because, and Joyce, you can help and correct me. I don't think we as women have to submit to men. I think we have to submit to authority. We have to submit to our spouses. But a woman doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. You don't have to submit to every man out, <laughs> mm-hmm. out in the world. When you, co- when you come into, hmm. I mean, a leadership meeting, mm-hmm. let's just say the four of us were in a meeting. Okay. Obviously, I'm the president here mm-hmm. of the ministry, so you would need to submit to me right. if I said something. Mm-hmm. But... You're on equal terms with most of the meetings you go into. Sure. You're on equal terms with everybody else there. Mm-hmm. And that uh, submission doesn't mean you can't have an opinion. Right. It doesn't mean you can't say anything. Mm-hmm. It just, I mean, I believe me, I say plenty at home. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, but if it comes right down to it, push comes to shove and a decision has to be made, right and Dave and I don't agree, then I'll back off and let him make it. And, uh, of course, if he's wrong, he never says he is because men don't like to be wrong. <laughs> we, we did that this week. We, um, we needed to get a new vehicle, and I don't like making purchases like that. Like, it's too big. I just I don't like it. But I also have strong opinions about what we're going to do if we're going to make a purchase. And so my calls, he has this information to share. He's like, should we do it? And I felt so strongly the Holy Spirit say, you don't feel strong enough. Like I haven't put anything in you strong enough to push back. So let him make this call mm-hmm. because you trust him in this. And I was like, okay, you, I trust you. Do what you want to do. And it, it worked out. But well, I, men love that when you say, I trust you. I, I believe you'll make the right choice. Yeah, I could see that. I do it sometimes on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> a little twinkle in his eye. <laughs> and you know what? Even when in dating now, like I, I'm dating people that can be comfortable with all of the different things that I do. I think it's important even when, you know, when you're dating, I don't say everything that I do, but mm-hmm. it's like I can feel the vibe if this person is very like dogmatic or like, you know, do this, do that. And I'm like, okay. Okay, you know, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, you know. Like, but I mean, because honestly, most people that I know that are women, females that are in leadership, desire to have someone that can help help them disarm when they yeah, go home. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like I don't, I don't think most women want to run everything, you yeah. know. <laughs> I think. I, I want someone that can take the lead and that I can yeah. trust with certain things in the house. Like, especially now being single, like I'm tired <laughs> of doing everything. I don't like, want to be in charge of repairs. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want. I'll be like, who's gonna change this light bulb? Oh, it's me. Oh, where are you going to dinner? Yeah, I don't, I don't care. Just care. pick a place. Just pick. <laughs> just I just want somebody that could come in and help me make some decisions. Like I look forward to things like mm-hmm. we all need a break again. Yeah, yeah exactly. I need a break. I, I lead in almost everything else I do. Yeah, I want to be able to just breathe and you know. And I trust think someone. men that can let their wives. Be who God wants them to be. They are the strongest of men. I agree. A man who feels that he has to rule a woman Mm -hmm. is really a pathetically weak Mm -hmm. little guy. And my husband is. (laughs) I love the way you said that. A weak little guy. (laughs) Well, he is. I mean, because it's it's insecurity, it's fear that Mm -hmm. she's going to look better than you, and. Man, we all have to respect Dave because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. And he's really not... He's certainly not less than me. People don't realize all the things that Dave did here in the beginning days that we would not be here if we weren't here. Right, I mean, sure. he helped design and oversaw the building of this whole building. Dave was the one that initially 
said we should go on TV and started calling and getting me on TV. He was the one that got me on the radio stations. He used to call and and around and get the best price on back then cassette tapes. <laughs> and uh, you know there was I mean, he would, we didn't have GPS and he'd lay out all these maps and map out all the routes for the cities we were going to drive yeah. to. And you know he he's done plenty. He just hasn't done it from the platform. But I probably. In all the meetings that I've done, if Dave has missed 10, hmm. that would be a lot. That's amazing. And he's, you know, we've got a chapel tomorrow, and I said, you know, I'm not going to say anything you haven't heard 25 times. He said, yeah, but it'll be different, you know, and it'll be good. Yeah. So he I want to go and hear you. That says and, a lot. Uh, he, he's a very strong man. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to say that, that it takes a strong man to be able to let his wife be who she is. It does. Yeah. You and I have talked about this a lot with our husbands, how right. much we value the the man that God has given us. Because mm -hmm. if Tim wasn't as secure in who he is, right. it'd be very difficult for a lot of men and to be comfortable with me going out and traveling the world and, and doing the things that I'm doing. And, and he also has to be a man of great faith mm -hmm. because, you know, it's out of his control quite right. often. And that's not an easy thing right. for men or for any of us. Yeah. And so I, I am just very grateful for the strength of, right. of men who support their wives in, in the way that God wants them to. And we, in turn, need right. to be the type of woman who will support... Yeah. Men right. in our lives, whether it's you know a spouse or a husband or whoever it is, right. in a spouse or a husband, <laughs> a spouse or a father is where I was going. Um, but anyway, we we just need to support one another. And I think there's something that maybe is a stumbling block for many women about God in general or about the Bible that says women aren't as important to God <laughs> because of you know the way that the culture was then. And different things that that you can focus on, but there's so much clearly in God's word right. about His love for women and the women in the Bible who were strong and right. great women of faith, and and I think it's important to dig into God's word and see that, see who you are to God and how valuable right. you are as a woman. Well, you know, um, uh, you said one of the things we want to talk about, and I want to make sure we get to it before we run out of time is why we have Project Girl. So why don't you talk about that, Ginger? Why, what, why are we trying to help women all over the world have the freedom that we have now? Yeah. I think one of the things that's so important is, of course, your own personal history. Right. It, it's a passion for you because of what you've been through and the abuse and, and, and the healing that God has right. brought you. And women need that all over the world. And, yeah. and as I travel and do this, I think about what I shared earlier, that my parents instilled in me right. this value in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that so much. And I... I need, I have like a compulsion to go share that with other women everywhere because they are not being told See, that. See, my dad told me all the time, you'll never amount to exactly. anything. Exactly. <laughs> so many are told the opposite. And so if we can tell them the truth, right. in spite of what their family may have said, in spite of what culture may be saying right. to them, mm -hmm. that, that we can do that. We can tell them the truth of Christ. But in order to do that, we also have to be able to meet some of those physical needs right. because women are more impacted by poverty right. and situations around the world like unclean water and human trafficking, far more impacted than, than other Lack people are. Lack of education. Are. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not even feeling that education is necessary for a right. woman in many places. But God opens the doors for us to do something about that. Right. And so together, yeah. you know, we are seeing great things happen yeah. and we are seeing young women come up who are amazing, who are um, pouring out themselves for God and really seeing a difference in the culture that they are impacting right where yeah. they are. So we're helping victims of sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. We're being able to see them freed and then we do a lot with, women that are trapped in prostitution yeah. because they feel that's the only way that they can make a living. And so we get them out of that situation and teach them a trade so they don't have to go back to that. We're feeding. Mm -hmm. We're providing clean water wells So, because it's usually the girls who have to go collect the water and they can spend up to a half a day just walking, trying to get it and and 
get it back. And we're even providing hygiene products for yeah. girls yeah. when they're in their monthly cycle because they don't have anything mm -hmm. like that there. And, uh, and they're missing so much school because of it, and then right. their education suffers. They can't keep up, and they drop out. And, and just educating parents, too, that girls are just as valuable mm -hmm. as boys, and they're a gift from God. Yeah. And uh, all I can say is I bet we make the devil very mad because— uh, I know it, yeah. You know, like the abuse that I started out with, 15 years of sexual abuse, and— uh, just the condition that I was in, and now to see God turn that completely around and then us be able to help women all over the world. It's like, yay. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's so exciting. And I think about those examples in the Bible that are doing what what we're talking about, those those women that inspire us to continue right. doing what we're doing. Um, you know, there's a woman in the Bible named Deborah. Mm -hmm. And there's you love her. I love Deborah. <laughs> I love Deborah. Deborah is such an inspiration to me. And there's not even that much about her. Mm -hmm. There's just a few verses, but they're incredible verses because she was a judge over the people. People came to her to settle their disputes. Yeah. And she was a leader. She was a, a, a military leader and she led their people to victory. And so after it tells you all that, it says, and then Israel had peace for 40 years because of what God used this woman to do. You see, just that one example. Yes. I mean, way over here in the Old Testament where it was really bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you have this woman that God has anointed to be a judge, which was a very important yeah. mm -hmm. role in those days. So nobody can say that God does not use women. Yeah. yeah, and there's one more thing I love about Deborah. There's there's this whole chapter that is just kind of Deborah's praise to God. Uh -huh. It's just just a, a song of praise. So she's giving all the credit in the right place. It's not about making a statement, I'm a woman and I can do this. It's about this is what God's called me to do and I will give Him the glory. Yeah. But she also in this in this song of praise, um, gives props to another woman mm -hmm. who did something amazing. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It, it's women supporting women as well, because there good. can be conflict, there can be competition, mm -hmm. and we need to all put that down yeah, right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So Deborah's another great example of that, of, of saying, hey, don't forget this, this other amazing yeah, woman good. over here and what she did, that's good. and let's give God praise for it. Yeah, and I, 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 like, I've been a little quiet this one because I was... Um, <laughs> I noticed that. You did? <laughs> I was a little reluctant to say this, but I do think it's important. To, I feel compelled to, to bring this out um, because when you said initially um, how you didn't know you were a woman, I knew what, I knew what you were saying. <laughs> but because I, my parents did put, my mom is a force. Like she's mm -hmm. four foot 11, beautiful black woman that has just been a leader. That's all I know is for her to be this strong leader. And she instilled that in me. Um, but I remember when I first went to, a Christian school. And I was, it was my first time really going to that particular type of Christian school where I was, was first time I was ever the minority in that school. And I went in there in my little short self, just ready to take on <laughs> this school. Like, where's the gospel choir so I can lead it? Where's the student government so I can lead it? Where's, you know, I was just, where, I'm a cheerleader, basketball player, soccer player. I did all of it, right? Yeah. And I remember being the student body president, student government president, and a nickname came for me um, that was called Pounds. And I wasn't, I was, I was definitely just a, like, barely a hundred pounds. I was short. And I'm like, I never really knew um, what that meant. And I hadn't really experienced anything like racism or anything. And, you know, but at the end of the school, I finally asked the guys, cause I was over a lot of guys as student government president. And most of the guys, I was, I was a black girl over a lot of white guys. And they said that pounds stood for LBS, little black Satan. And oh. I was like, that damage that did something to me okay. because and how it, could it not? And it made oh me. It, and I was like, well, I was always nice to you guys. They just didn't like listening to me. Mm -hmm. They didn't like. And I remember from that day forward, I kind of shied away, and in some areas, really pushed forward to make sure. No, like yeah. you know, I fought for justice. I'm a justice mm -hmm. girl. But I think it's important to communicate that 
us as moms to need to talk to our kids, you know, oh, yeah. like and our boys. Like that that damn that did Ooh, something that to makes me mad. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like I, I rem- like that really did something to me. And it mm-hmm. car- it it's taken a lot. And sometimes that story still can make me feel a certain because sure. I was really nice to those guys and I, but I was in a position to make decisions. That was like one of those fiery darts. Yeah. That, that's just what I thought. You know, the Bible says that through faith we can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Yeah. And that was just like pow. Yeah. Just trying to mm-hmm. shut you up and sit you down. And that's, and that, from that, I mean, and from that moment, I felt that, like, I wonder, because a lot of the areas, I am a minority. And I just think when, even at a Christian school, yeah. with little, you know, little, little bad boys, like, forget them. Like, but I love them still. Like, if y'all watching, you know what you did. But, um, <laughs> I, like, I just think we need to, even stateside, a lot of things we sweep under the rug and we don't talk about it with our children. Because I've had to talk about that with my daughter just to say like, hey, if you ever experienced this, just know that it's a fiery daughter of the enemy. But I think we need to talk to our boys too, to respect women. That's all such women. a good point. Like That's here in America, important. we need to do That's that. That's important yeah. right yeah. there. We can do some things as moms and and aunts and friends and, and sisters and leaders to talk to our girls to assure them here in the States and our boys absolutely on how to we have to how yeah. to respect women as well still yeah. I've had and that, that is part of Project Girl I mean it's not just overseas in other yeah. countries it, yeah. it's, it's doing it everywhere, everywhere. And, yeah. and what you were saying I, I, you cannot overlook who you are you know right. what I mean the, the fact that you're a black woman yeah it, it does raise that that expectation level to even a new place. Yeah. And so you have a lot that you're dealing with there. And and what I was talking about and you know, not knowing, I still faced so many things as being a of woman. Course. And yeah. and just being kind of surprised about it. And, you know, like like you were saying, yeah, I was saying I was shocked. you're not expecting <laughs> was, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it it is a a constant struggle that I think we as women need to continue to fight for the next generations. Mm-hmm. And I love what you said about talking to our boys. Yeah, it just, yeah I think it's important to do, you know. To what s- were you going to say, Erin? I cut you off. I'm sorry. It's okay. It was really good. I'm glad that you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to remember what I was. Oh, because I've been talking to, we talked to Caden about it. And so I will find myself like he'll want to push his sister because he's a brother and that's what they do. <laughs> but he'll touch her and she'll say, no, stop. And then so he'll keep bugging her. And if like something wells up with me that, and I have to remind myself, like, calm down, he's eight. But you, if a girl tells you no, she doesn't want to be touched, don't touch her. There's a boundary, and you, you need to protect her as her brother, but also as a male. Mm. Your job is to protect this female generation or this group of females, and you are going to be That's taught great. in this home that a woman is to be cherished and loved and valued. And if she says, don't touch me, don't touch her. Yeah. And I think that I think that's so important. I mean, it just, it's evident, like, that you, you're doing a great job with your kids. Like, because even he called, I, I, like, it's little things. People don't realize how little things, at, like, can reassure a person, even like me. You know, like, your son calling me Auntie J or hearing my song. Like, it's like... This little, this little white baby loves me. You know, he, he does. doesn't see me. He does. You know, it, it, but that does years of healing mm. as a woman and as a woman of color. It's like, it just, it, it shows you that there's hope for the future, you mm. know? Like it's, so you're doing a great job oh, with that. So just know that. Things are changing and getting better and better and better all the time. And we can't live in the past. We need to live in the future. And I just think it's important for all women. Yeah. All women to... Let's just shed off this fear, mm-hmm. you know, that we're not going to be accepted yeah. and assume that we are yeah. <laughs> and have a real positive attitude about it. Well, it definitely is something that I think is great for us to talk about so that women don't feel like, am I crazy for feeling mm-hmm. this way? Yeah. Or, you know, um, especially different generations and going through different things and and encouraging, inspiring and lifting other women up and right. and doing it all for, for God's glory. So we want to make sure that you know more about Project Girl if you would like to help be involved in that and just guide, restore, and love women and girls all over the world telling them about Christ. You can go to projectgirl.org to find out more about that. And we do have a book for you today, which is amazing if yes. you would like to check this out. This is Joyce's book called Ooh. Healing the Soul <laughs> Healing the Soul of a Woman. So Such a great book One because it, it really does talk about 
who a woman is and what she needs and whether there have been things in the past that have um, changed who she thinks she is. God doesn't change who he is. It's the prettiest book we have. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's so pretty. So if you go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, um, you can find out how to get that book. We are very appreciative to all of you for sharing with us today. Thank you all for being with us. Thanks for being one of the girls and we will see you next time. JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us. 